Hey, hey, math people. So the other day I was on YouTube just checking out my data and I see that I'm at almost 1,000 subscribers. And even though a lot of them are just my students pitying me and like four of them are my mom's email work accounts, I want to say thank you if you're subscribed. To celebrate this 1K, I want to do a video on old school math memes. So what do I mean by old school math memes? So on the internet over the years, uh, teachers have contributed to this pool of um, common math mistake memes. And the general layout is every time you do this, something dies. Every time you drop a negative, a turtle dies. Sad. But they're just common math mistakes that math teachers use to um, make the... <laughs> make the grind a little bit more painless and a little bit more fun. Because we answer the same questions over and over and over and over and over again. And I am happy to answer the same questions over and over and over again for the next 40 years. I love my job. So I have a conference in like 42 minutes. So let's see how many of these memes we can get through. Uh, my goal is eight. So uh, let's go with the first one. Okay, so for the first time, every time you forget this, a baby panda dies. I don't like how specific it is, but this is a very common mistake. So what a lot of kids do is they see the square and uh, they, they say, I know how to get rid of this square. I take the square root, duh. And they take the square root of both, on both sides and that's great. And they say X is equal to four and then they only get half credit. What did they do wrong? Um, really their process was right. If you have X squared is equal to 16, sure you can take the square root of both sides. We just have to remember uh, the plus or minus. When you take the square root in solving and you have an even power, uh, you need to remember that both four squared and negative four squared, a negative times a negative is a positive, is equal to 16. Uh, so this next one reads, every time you do this, the math unicorn can't understand why you hurt its feeling so badly. Or it says something like that. I, I'm not actually looking at it, obviously. We have the square root of four plus the square root of six, and hey, that's the square root of 10, right? No, uh, what this student or what these students were probably thinking, um, if you do have the product, if you have the square root of four um, times the square root of six, you actually can multiply the two um, numbers inside the radical and keep it underneath the radical. That That's fair game. Uh, so this is equal to the square root of the product, which is 24. Uh, that's okay, but you can't do that with addition. You can think intuitively, think it logically. Square root of four is just two. Square root of six, eh, that's two point something because it's in between uh, four and nine. Uh, so that's two and three, the square roots. So two plus two point something is like four point something. Square root of 10, uh, that's just a little bit higher than the square root of nine. That's actually three point something. Eh, not working out for you. So this next one, every time you do this, another baby otter picture is deleted from the internet. So this is much more wholesome, right? Not uh, having to do with um, death. Uh, okay, so let's see what they did wrong here. So here we have two to the power of x, and that's to the third, and that's equal to eight to the power of three x. So what they did was kind of right. So when you have a uh, power, and it's we have uh, outside we have another power, we can take the product. X times three is three x. Awesome. They applied it to the base, and then they kept it as three x and that's where they went wrong. So I would say uh, here, yeah, you can take the product. So two X and this, if this is to the third, uh, you can say that this is two to the three X. I guess if you wanted to go further, you can um, just apply this power of three. Um, so you can say two to the third, and then this is all to the X to get eight to the power of X. And that is um, it, that three only being applied once, not, not twice, because here you would then have eight to the third again, which is some huge number. Next one, the meme is easy. Every time you do this, a bunny dies. So math-wise, I, I don't teach trig. Uh, I don't see this. So I, they have x squared, uh, so we're assuming the product, right? x squared times sine of x is equal to the sine of x cubed. Um, just instinctively, no, <laughs> right? So if, if we look at this, we have a uh, quadratic multiplied by a trig function sine. And you, you can't just do that. You can't, okay, so normally, uh, normally if you have like, uh, x to the fifth times x to the third. Sure, you can add up those exponents and do x to the eighth. Uh, but that's only when there's nothing else happening to it, right? Here we have a trig function on x. Uh, so you can't just say, hey, meet up. Compare the graphs of these two, which are right here. Um, so as you can see, those are very different graphs. These are not the same things. Can't do that. 
Okay, the next one. Every time you do this, another bear disrespects you, man. So this mistake is quite simple. Uh, they just don't know how to add fractions. Which is fine, because people just forget this thing, right? So they did kind of the right idea. They saw that if you're multiplying these bases, you can actually add up the exponents. Uh, but it turns out uh, one-fourth plus one-third isn't equal to two-sevenths. So what, what they did was they did one plus one is two. Four plus three is seven. Uh, let me show you just how not right that is. If I have half a pizza and I add it up with another half of a pizza, how many pizzas do I have? Intuitively, a half plus a half is a whole. Uh, but using this logic here, uh, one plus one is two. Two plus two is four. So what is correct here, procedurally they did the right thing. Procedurally they just added up the exponents, but we need to make sure we have the same denominators. So here if we have one fourth plus one third, um, I gotta find that least common denominator of 12. This is the same thing as 3 over 12 plus 4 over 12 um, to get a final answer of 7 over 12. So you add the uh, numerators up. So this is actually equal to x to the 7 12 power. Okay, the next one says every time you do this, a chipmunk dies. In this case, we got the quadratic formula in play. We, we don't know what the initial quadratic looks like. This is just kind of what it's simplified to. I think there are two common reasons for this mistake. Uh, the first is they just say, hey, a two over two, awesome. I can just cancel those out. Uh, and then they get negative four um, plus or minus the root of three. You, you can't do that. Uh, you did half the work and I'll explain that in a moment. But the other reason why I, um, I see this is because what, what sometimes happens is that students will make this fraction bar in the quadratic formula, they'll make it progressively smaller and smaller with each step. And, and finally, it just kind of, which is incorrect, no longer applied to that negative B up front. So just like my patience over time with this issue, it slowly, slowly, slowly diminishes. Here they had negative four plus or minus two root three all over two. Okay, just like when you are distributing in a number. So if you had like two times the quantity of x plus three, uh, you gotta multiply it by both of those terms inside. Same story here, you're just dividing both numbers. Um, so not only can you, or not only do you have to divide two by two, you also have to divide this negative four by two. Um, so we can do that here. Uh, this is the same thing as negative two plus or minus. Uh, here the twos do cancel and you will get root three. Uh, you just have a different number in front. If it helps, try to think of it as one half times negative four plus or minus two root two. The reason why I suggest this, kids are very good at distributing um, as opposed to just dividing two terms uh, by a number. So another way of thinking about it. Next one on the list, every time you do this, another owl dies of a heart attack. That's very specific, and why they chose owl, I have no clue. Let's talk about this one here, we have the cube root of 27, and that's equal to 27 to the first divided by three. These are two, mm, these are two different ideas. You gotta be very careful here when you're typing this in a calculator. That's what I'm assuming that this teacher is referencing. Uh, they're typing it wrong in their calculator. Um, so when you do this in your calculator, it's reading it as uh, 27 to the first, okay, and then divide that by 3. Uh, so if you do this 27 to the first, it's just 27 divided by 3, you get 9. Uh, yeah, just making sure there. You get 9. Uh, so what, what is the student trying to do? They're trying to raise this whole thing to the uh, one-third power. Uh, so with that said, they should have typed in 27 and uh, with the new new calculator apps you can you can actually make sure you have a fraction up here uh, but let's just say you're using an older calculator or you're using google because sometimes google if you just use their um search bar you can actually do math with it uh you, you should do to the power of which is shift six uh parentheses one divided by three uh if you do that it, it will shoot out the, the correct answer of three um here what times what times what you kind of do uh, is equal to 27, so we're just doing it mentally right now. Uh, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, 3 times 3 times 3, uh, that will be your answer of 27. 3 times 3 times 3. Uh, so here the right answer is just 3. They typed it wrong in their calculator. It's a simple mistake of the exponent. So I'm saving the best for last because I have a meme version of this in my classroom. Uh, every time you do this, a fawn dies. And I'm only gonna look at the top one. Here we have the quantity of x plus three all squared is equal to x squared plus nine. Ouch, this is the most common mistake in my opinion uh, in the math classroom. They distributed the square. 
Oh no. Uh, so you can't do this. Uh, here we have we have two of these things. So we have so that's what the square means. We have two x plus three that are being multiplied by one another. Uh, so just like when you have like five squared, this is the same thing as five times five, which is twenty-five. Uh, you can write it out twice. You can expand it. Here I'm going to do the same thing. I got two of these things, so I'm going to do x plus three times x plus three because I got two. There's a, there's quite a few ways you can you can solve this. You can do FOIL. You can do box method, area model, um, distribute, blah blah blah. It's just distribution. Uh, you should be dealing with x squared plus three x plus three x plus 9, do, 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 x squared plus 6x plus 9. Uh, we forget this 6x in the process, right? Uh, that's the idea. So I like this one a lot because this is what I call cat killing in my classroom. I actually, my meme has, this is my meme. I like to draw dead kittens on papers that do this mistake. Uh, it's kind of fun. Not cat killing. Cat, cat killing is not fun. Don't kill a cat. Or fawns, or owls, or any other animal harmed in the making of this video uh, in a metaphoric uh, sense. And that is that. Uh, that's all I have time for. So um, here's here's another mistake that I see all the time. What a lot of kids will do is they'll do 3x minus 3x is equal to x. The threes go away. Uh, not, not quite. Um, so the way you can think of this, just think of x as dogs. If you have three dogs minus three dogs, how many dogs do you have? You have zero dogs. So this should just be, it should just cancel. This is actually just equal to, to nothing. But kids, what they'll do is they'll just cancel out these threes and they'll just leave the X there. So my question for you is what what animal uh, should we sacrifice? I don't really know if I like this question anymore. So that is all I have for this video. I'm going to continue to math on. I hope you do the same. I'll see you in the next video.